Today we have this device from Siege Studio with which we can create our own local voice assistant with Home Assistant. The main thing about this is that you don't need any wires to join or solder any parts. Also, you can connect your own speaker to this using a 3.5mm jack. This board has two microphones for good speech recognition. Along with this, you have this hardware mute button as well as a programmable RGB LED here. On flipping this board, we have this Zio ESP32 S3 board that is mounted on top of this board. Now this has an external Wi-Fi antenna that is connected to the ESP32 S3. Now we have this XMOS XU316 chip that has natural language understanding algorithm which helps for better noise cancellation and voice detection. Along with this we have this 3.5mm jack with which you can connect an external speaker. And we have this 2 pin connector with which we can connect the 5 watt speaker as well as this USB port with which we can flash a firmware on this port. Now when you buy the components make sure that you select the re-speaker light with ESP32 S3 version and also the 5 watt speaker. You can optionally buy the acrylic enclosure that you can assemble by yourself which costs about $5. In my case I created my own enclosure and 3D printed it to personalize my voice assistant. It is a simple octagonal case that you can print and assemble it together. The speaker is attached from below and it is facing upwards and then I sealed it with some hot glue. I then flipped the device and then connected the 2 pin connector from the speaker to the board. Then I placed the board on top and then secured it with this speaker grill that I printed. Finally, I closed the case with this bottom plate from below. And this is how the entire device looks like. I'll provide the links to buy all the components and the STL file in the article that I will link into the description below. Once you have the device, you need to first update the firmware on the board. For this, you need to connect the board's USB port, which is the one next to the 3.5mm jack. Then install the DFU utils, depending on if you have a Linux, Windows or a Mac system. Once you do that, download the latest 1 dot version of the i2s firmware, which is currently the 1.0.9 version at the time of making the video. Make sure you download the i2s firmware and not the USB firmware which is 2 dot version something. Once you download the firmware, flash the firmware using the command and you are now ready to use the device. You can follow the guide provided by Seed Studio to prepare the device to use it with Home Assistant. But this guide does not have an on-device wake word detection. Now I have the ESP home code which provides on-device wake word detection with micro wake word. Before we start, I want to thank the awesome Home Assistant community members, namely Format BCE and Kevin, who have provided immense support to make micro wake word detection work on this device. Now let's go ahead and see how we can set this up. Now to start off, first thing that you need to do is you need to set up Whisper and Piper add-ons inside Home Assistant. Now if you have not done that, then I have a video linked somewhere here wherein I've shown you how you can set up both these add-ons as well as set up the voice assist pipeline. So once you do that, you will have a voice assist pipeline something like this wherein you have faster Whisper configured as speech to text and then we have Piper which is used for text to speech. We won't be using the wake word add-on here because we'll be using the on-device wake word detection mechanism, right? So after you have this pipeline ready, what we are going to do is we are going to go to our ESP home add-on and here we are going to create a new device. So I'm going to click on continue and I'm going to use the name re-speaker light and I'm going to say next. And here I'm going to select ESP32 S3. Now, once you do that, I'm going to skip this and I'm going to click on edit. Now, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the entire YAML that I have already created. And this is how it is right now. So I have this another ESP home instance that I'm running. And here, if you see, there are various options here. So just to tell you what are the various components here. First of all, you have to make sure that you have added this look at these configurations here as compared to what you would get when you create it for the first time so look at these configurations here as well as this sdk configuration and your framework type to be esp idf which is right now not being set over here right along with this you have to make sure that your ps ram is set to octal with 80 megahertz 
Now, once you scroll down here, there are a few things that you will have to do. So first of all, you can copy this entire configuration, which I will provide in the article that I will link into the description below. You just have to copy everything from this external component right to this bottom here right now. And this will configure everything. So what does this thing have? So first of all, it has a configuration for the on-device wake word. Then it has a configuration to allow you to control the volume of the speaker that is attached to this board also. Along with this, you will also have the timer functionality such that you can set the timer using a voice assistant as well as you can stop the timer using the voice assistant. Now, once you copy this entire code and paste it here, click on install and manually download it because you have to download it for the first time and flash it onto the ESP32 S3. So once you see this, click on this factory format and then you will get this binary that you can download. Now, once you download the binary, what you have to do is you have to open web.esphome.io such that we can now flash this binary on this device. So when you actually flip this board here, you have to connect the USB cable to this ESP32 S3 because we are flashing the binary to the ESP32 S3 and not to the board here. Once you do that, you can then click on connect here and then click on this and then connect it. Finally, you're going to click on install and then we are going to select the binary that we just downloaded. And then I'm going to click on install. So now the binary has been flashed and now we can go ahead and connect this in our home assistant. So let me go back to my home assistant here and I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to devices and services. And here I'm going to click on add integration and I'm going to search for my ESP home here. Now, mostly the device will be auto detected and then you can just click on configure and specify the encryption key. So right now I'm going to specify the IP address with which I know that this device has connected to my Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to click on submit here and this is going to ask me for the encryption key. So let me go ahead and paste the encryption key from here. Once I click on submit, so now the device is configured inside our home assistant. Let's click on finish and let's go to the device now. So here we have this device here. And then once I refresh this, you see quite many entities here. So first of all, we have this light button. If I turn it on, if you see right now, the light has come on here and then I can turn this off as well as you can adjust the volume of this speaker. And also there's a button to turn off the timer when the timer is ringing. I'll show you how this automation works for the timer here. Here it is also showing you the XMOS chips firmware version. And since we have installed the latest 1.0.9 version, this is actually right now being shown here. Now we are going to scroll down and here we are going to set the voice assist pipeline. So I'm going to select on device here and nothing else. Now let's go ahead and see if this thing works. So let me go to my dashboard here. And in this, I have this light entity, which is exposed to my voice assistant. Let's go ahead and test this right now. Hey Jarvis, turn on the light. Turns on the inbox, Boolean. So if you see right now, the light has turned on using this on device wake word mechanism on this re-speaker light board. Now this was the voice assistant related part. Let's look at how can this voice assistant handle also timers. So for this, you need to do a small configuration. Let's go to settings here. And then in automations, I'm going to create a new automation here. I'm going to set in the trigger section. I'm going to say sentence and I'm going to just say stop here. Now, next I'm going to add an action that is switch off a button. And in the entities, I'm going to select the timer ringing button, which came from the re-speaker light configuration. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to click on save and I'm going to call this as stop timer ringing and then with this let's go ahead and set a timer hey jarvis set a timer for five seconds timer started okay so the timer has started for five seconds so now the timer is ringing and you can see this with this pink led indicator let's go ahead and stop it hey jarvis stop Done. So if you see this automation got triggered, which actually stopped the timer from ringing. Now, if you want to see how this timer ringing thing works with this voice assistant, you can check this video out here, wherein I've shown you how I have set up this timer ringing part. Now you can also connect an external speaker to this using a 3.5 mm jack. 
You can then add this to Music Assistant as a Home Assistant speaker and play music using Music Assistant. Now I have a video linked somewhere here as well as into the description below wherein I have shown you how you can set up Music Assistant with Home Assistant. Now there are two major things that you need to consider. Firstly, the sound may not be the best for playing music because the speaker is capped to 32 bits and 16,000 sample rate. This is because the speaker and the microphone share the same I2S bus and since the microphone operates at 16,000 sample rate, the speaker also has to work at this rate. Secondly, most of the code that I've shown you is currently under development. So there could be some breaking changes until it is stable. Now I'll be using this device as a daily driver along with the other voice assistants that I have created. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to see any updates towards it. Now if you like this video and you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.